A city with no roads, only canals, no cars, only boats, buildings that rise directly from the water like something from a fairy tale. But here's the mind-bending part. This isn't fantasy, it's Venice, Italy, and it's been floating for over 1,500 years. Every single day, 118 tiny islands support palaces, churches, and homes that house 50,000 people, all while being surrounded by water. The city processes millions of tourists who walk across bridges connecting islands that exist in a lagoon. But how is this even possible? How do you build a city on water? How do buildings stay upright when there's no solid ground beneath them? Most people think Venice is built on water, but that's not exactly true. The reality is far more incredible and ingenious than you can imagine. Venice isn't just floating, it's performing one of the greatest engineering feats in human history, and it's been doing it for longer than most countries have existed. Let's shatter the biggest myth right away. Venice doesn't actually float. It's not like a massive boat bobbing in the water. Instead, Venice sits on millions of wooden poles driven deep into the sea floor, creating what's essentially an artificial foundation in one of the most challenging environments on Earth. Here's how this incredible feat works. The Venetian lagoon sits on layers of clay, sand, and silt that accumulated over thousands of years. This soggy foundation would normally be impossible to build on, but Venetian engineers discovered something remarkable. If you drive wooden poles deep enough into this marshy ground, they create an incredibly stable platform. The wood they used came from the forests of Slovenia, Croatia, and Montenegro. These weren't just any trees, they used alder, oak, and larch, woods that become harder and more durable when constantly submerged in water. The lack of oxygen underwater prevents the wood from rotting, essentially turning these poles into underwater concrete pillars. But here's where it gets truly impressive. Each building in Venice rests on thousands of these wooden poles. The Rialto Bridge alone sits on 12,000 wooden poles. The Santa Maria della Salute Church? It's supported by over 1 million wooden poles driven into the lagoon floor. Imagine the logistics in that. In an era before modern machinery, workers had to manually drive millions of wooden poles into underwater mud, creating a forest of timber beneath the city. On top of these wooden foundations, Venetian builders place layers of Istrian stone, a type of limestone that's incredibly resistant to salt water. This created a waterproof barrier between the wooden poles and the buildings above. Then came layers of brick and mortar specifically designed to withstand constant moisture and salt exposure. The entire system works because it distributes weight evenly across thousands of support points like a massive wooden raft embedded in the sea floor. The buildings don't sink because the wooden poles reach down to more stable clay layers below the soft surface sediment. It's brilliant and it's been working for over 1,500 years. But why would anyone choose to build a city in such an impossible location? The answer lies in one of history's most dramatic survival stories. Venice wasn't built by choice, it was built out of desperation. In the 5th and 6th centuries, the Roman Empire was collapsing. Barbarian tribes swept across northern Italy, destroying cities and massacring populations. Hun warriors led by Attila terrorized the mainland, followed by Lombard invasions that made life on solid ground a death sentence for many Romans. Faced with extinction, thousands of refugees fled to the Venetian lagoon. This wasn't prime real estate. It was a collection of muddy, mosquito-infested islands that most people considered worthless. But 
That's exactly what made it perfect. The shallow waters and maze-like channels were nearly impossible for armies to navigate. Horses couldn't charge through water, and heavy military equipment got stuck in the mud. What started as temporary refugee camps slowly evolved into permanent settlements. Families who thought they returned to the mainland in a few months found themselves staying for years, then decades. They had to learn entirely new ways of living, fishing instead of farming, boats instead of horses, tides instead of seasons. By the 7th century, these scattered island communities had united under a single leader called the Doge, forming what would become the most serene republic of Venice. The lagoon that had protected them from barbarian invasions now became their launching pad for something extraordinary. Venice's location between east and west made it the perfect trading hub. Ships from Constantinople could dock in Venetian harbors, while overland routes connected to northern Europe. The city that began as a refuge became the wealthiest trading empire in medieval Europe. Venice controlled trade routes to Asia, bringing spices, silk, and precious goods to European markets. The famous Marco Polo was Venetian, and his journeys to China were part of Venice's massive commercial network. For over 500 years, Venice was essentially the New York City of the medieval world. If you wanted to get rich through international trade, you came to Venice. <music> Now that we understand why Venice exists, let's go into the incredible engineering that made it possible. Building a city on water required innovations that wouldn't look out of place in a modern engineering textbook. First, Venetian builders had to solve the problem of moving materials. Every brick, every stone, every wooden beam had to be transported by boat through narrow canals. They developed an entire fleet of specialized vessels, flat-bottomed boats for shallow areas, narrow barges for tight canals, and floating cranes for heavy lifting. The city's famous gondolas weren't just for romance, they were essential construction vehicles. Workers used massive wooden hammers called beetles that could weigh over 1,000 pounds. These hammers were lifted by pulleys and then dropped repeatedly onto wooden poles. A single foundation might require months of continuous hammering, with work crews operating around the clock. But here's what's truly remarkable. Venetian engineers understood concepts that modern builders still use today. They knew about load distribution, water pressure, and structural engineering principles that wouldn't be formally documented until centuries later. They created flexible foundations that could move slightly with tides and settling, preventing the rigid fractures that would destroy a building. The buildings themselves used special construction techniques adapted for the watery environment. Walls were built thicker at the base to resist water pressure. Special mortars were developed using volcanic ash that could set underwater. Windows and doors were positioned to account for periodic flooding during high tides. Venetian builders also mastered the art of creating waterproof basements and ground floors. They used multiple layers of stone and special sealants to create barriers against saltwater intrusion. The city's famous bridges presented their own engineering challenges. Each bridge had to be tall enough for boats to pass underneath while still being stable enough to support crowds of people and goods. The Rialto Bridge, completed in 1591, was considered impossible by many engineers of the time. It spans 46 meters with a single stone arch, supporting shops and handling thousands of people daily. If you're amazed by how Venice defied every rule of city building, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss our videos. And drop a comment below, would you have been brave enough to build a city in a swamp? We love hearing your thoughts on these impossible achievements that shaped our world.
Living in Venice means adapting to challenges that land-based cities never face. Every aspect of daily life had to be reimagined for a world where water replaces streets and boats replace cars. Transportation is the most obvious difference. Venetians developed an intricate system of canals, bridges, and walkways that function like a three-dimensional highway system. The Grand Canal serves as the main thoroughfare, while smaller canals branch off like side streets. Water taxis, private boats, and delivery vessels navigate this aquatic road network following traffic rules adopted for waterways. But what about emergencies? Venice developed one of the world's most professional firefighting forces, equipped with boats instead of trucks. Fireboats navigate the canals carrying pumps, hoses, and firefighters trained to battle blazes from the water. Medical emergencies require ambulance boats that can rush patients to hospitals via the fastest canal routes. Daily deliveries present constant logistical puzzles. Every piece of mail, every grocery item, every piece of furniture must arrive by boat. Amazon deliveries in Venice require an entirely different distribution network compared to land-based cities. Weather creates unique challenges that most cities never face. High tides, called Aqua Alta, can flood the entire city several times per year. Venetians have adapted with raised walkways, waterproof barriers, and buildings designed to handle periodic flooding. Many residents keep rubber boots by their doors and check tide schedules like weather forecasts. Waste management requires boats to collect garbage from canal-side pickup points. Sewage systems had to be engineered to work with tidal flows that naturally flush waste out to sea twice daily. Venice essentially uses the Adriatic Sea as a natural sewage treatment system, though modern environmental concerns have required updates to this ancient approach. Shopping and commerce adapted to the water-based environment in fascinating ways. Venice developed floating markets where vendors could sell goods directly from their boats. The city's famous Rialto Market has operated for over 1,000 years, with merchants arriving by boat each morning to sell fresh fish, vegetables, and goods from across the Mediterranean. Even romance and social life adapted to the aquatic environment. Venetian courtship traditions involved serenading from gondolas, and many marriage proposals happened on canal bridges. The city's famous carnival celebrations use boats as parade floats with elaborate costumes and masks designed to look spectacular from water level. After surviving for over 1,500 years, Venice now faces its greatest existential threat. The city is sinking at an alarming rate while sea levels continue to rise, creating a double crisis that threatens to make Venice uninhabitable within this century. The sinking problem, called subsidence, has multiple causes. Industrial water pumping in the 20th century removed groundwater from beneath the lagoon, causing the land to compress and sink. Though this pumping has been reduced, the damage was already done. Venice has sunk approximately 23 centimeters over the past century, with the rate of sinking accelerating in recent decades. Climate change adds another layer of crisis. Rising global sea levels means higher base water levels in the Adriatic Sea. More frequent and severe storms create higher storm surges that push even more water into the lagoon. The combination of a sinking city and rising seas creates a compound problem that's getting worse each year. The famous Aqua Alta floods that once occurred a few times per year now happen dozens of times annually. Floods that were considered exceptional in the past are becoming routine. In November 2019, Venice experienced its second highest flood level in recorded history, with 85% of the city underwater. The flooding destroyed businesses, 
damaged historical buildings, and forced thousands of residents to evacuate. Tourism, ironically, contributes to the problem. Massive cruise ships create waves that erode the lagoon's foundations and disturb the delicate sediment balance. Millions of tourists each year put additional stress on the city's infrastructure while contributing to pollution that damages the ecosystem supporting the wooden foundations. The wooden poles that have supported Venice for centuries face new threats. Pollution and changing water chemistry affect the oxygen-free environment that preserves the wood. Some ancient foundations are beginning to show signs of deterioration that could compromise entire buildings. Population decline adds another dimension to the crisis. Young Venetians increasingly move to the mainland, unable to afford housing prices inflated by tourism. The city's population has dropped from over 170,000 in the 1950s to about 50,000 today. Venice has responded with the Mose Project, a system of movable barriers designed to protect the lagoon from extreme high tides. These massive engineering barriers can be raised to block surge waters during severe weather. However, the project has been plagued by delays, cost overruns, and corruption scandals. Even when fully operational, Mose can only address part of the flooding problem. So, can a real city float? Venice proves that not only can it be done, but it can thrive for over 1,500 years. What started as a desperate refuge in mosquito-infested swamps became one of history's greatest maritime empires and remains one of the world's most beautiful cities. Venice shows us that human ingenuity knows no bounds when survival is at stake. Medieval engineers solved problems that could challenge modern architects, creating solutions that have lasted longer than most civilizations. They turned an impossible location into a thriving metropolis that changed the course of world history. If this deep dive into Venice's incredible story inspired you, share it with someone who loves history, engineering, or just impossible achievements. Hit that subscribe button to join us for more explorations of how humans have conquered the impossible throughout history. Venice may be sinking, but its legacy of human determination will float forever.